In January 1989, police received a call that a man had discovered a leaf-covered human skeleton. Aside from some bits of tattered cloth and pieces of jewelry, little was left to indicate that this was once a living, breathing person. Police found no identification of any kind, no hints of who the victim might have been. They found no evidence of trauma, yet they suspected foul play. How else would the bones have gotten there? Detectives found little to tell them what happened, except for a dried out wasp's nest, long abandoned by its maker. Would it be enough of a clue? For help with the case, officers of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation contacted forensic anthropologist William Bass. Bass is an expert at reading human remains. He first established the age and sex of the victim. From the shape and size of the bones, he concluded that the skeleton belonged to a female who was not yet 18 when she died. But the cause of her death remained a mystery. Uh, there were no gunshots in the skull. There were no damage to any of the, of the uh, long bones or the bones of the body. Uh, we did not recover the hyoid bone, which is a bone in the neck, and which is one that you get when uh, you, you usually break if you strangle somebody. Although investigators were eager to find out how the girl died, they first tried to determine when she died in the hopes that it might lead to her identity. Boy lives right over here in this house. Where is he now? He went on home. I in the summer, uh, the soft tissue on the body in Tennessee uh, will disappear very rapidly. Uh, you can go from what you and I are now to a complete skeleton only about two weeks in July and August in Tennessee. If you die in the winter, it takes longer. If you die in the winter, by the following, uh, by the following spring or summer, uh, the brain would have decayed and the cranial vault, which is the inside of the skull, cranial vault would be dry by that time. At the crime scene, Bass looked at the wasp's nest. Knowing when it was made would help them pinpoint the victim's time of death. Wasps need a dry place to build their nests. Bass surmised the skull must have been on the ground for several months before it dried enough to become a suitable home for the insects. So what this tells me is in January when this skull was found, with the wasp nest in it, that individual had been dead and the skull dry the previous summer because this is when this wasp nest at least was, was built. To confirm his findings, Bass contacted forensic entomologist Neil Haskell to help him identify the victim. Haskell consults in criminal investigations all over the U.S. Like all insects, wasps live, breed, and die in predictable patterns. In Tennessee, they begin nest building in late April or May. By summer, the nest bustles with activity. Then, when the colder weather comes, the wasps die back. The cycle starts over again the following spring. Knowing this life cycle of this particular group of wasps enabled us to come up with a minimum time of the year that it took the wasps to build, plus another six to eight months for the skull to become cleaned and, and dry. In order for the queen wasp to have made her home there, the skull must have been completely dried out by spring 1988. Prior to the wasp's arrival, a brigade of egg-laying flies and carrion beetles must have foraged on the body and cleaned the skull late in the summer of 1987. Both Bass and Haskell concluded that the young girl died no later than midsummer 1987. Uh, we coupled the, the developmental time of the wasp plus the normal insects that eat this carrion and came up with an estimate of at least a year and a half prior to finding this uh, the skeletal remains 
that the person probably died. Now that was a minimum time. It could have been a little longer. In reality, it turned out that the, uh, uh, the body had actually been out there since uh, February of, of two years prior to the time we found the, the remains. The wasp nest had given investigators the information they desperately sought. Once they knew how long the girl had been dead, they began their hunt for her identity. They narrowed their search to teenage girls reported missing in 1987. They also took note of the jewelry found near the body. Investigators pulled a report detailing the disappearance of a young girl. In a photograph attached to the report, she wore some of the same jewelry found at the crime scene. The girl's name was Michelle Denise Anderson. She was 15 years old when she disappeared. Denise was last seen at a party on January 9th, 1987. When she didn't come home the next day, her mother reported her missing. Until police knew more about her disappearance, they considered Denise a runaway. Investigators had solved only part of the mystery. They knew Denise's name, and because of her age and the condition of the bones, that she was healthy when she died. They are convinced Denise was murdered, but they still don't know how. And no one has ever been charged with her murder. The case remains open. The investigation continues.